and ladies and gentlemen, we are live with you on the Wiley Drake Show. We thank you so much for being with us today, and we welcome you uh, for being on our show, and we thank you for joining us. Praise the Lord for you being here. We are continuing to cover a lot of things. But you know, in the Bible, the Bible says... God says, blow the trumpet of God. And so we have blown the trumpet of Almighty God. The Bible says when you blow the trumpet, that is done preliminary for prayer and preliminary for worship and preliminary for all that you do. And so we're here today to pray. We're live on the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C.'s Communications Channel of Prayer. We thank the Lord for the opportunity to be here with you and thank the Lord for the privilege of praying with you and for you. <clears throat> if you would like to join us, there is a special Congressional Communications Prayer Channel. That channel is open as we speak. You can call it by simply dialing a phone number and putting in your access code. We're hoping in just a few moments a young lady, long about five minutes after, a young lady from up in Colorado, a little different time zone, but in just a few moments, hopefully, if we got the time zones correct, she'll be calling in on that number and putting in the access code, and then she'll join us live here on speakerphone, live on this prayer meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, this prayer meeting is held every week. Not a week has gone by since... January of 2000 that this prayer line was not opened. I don't say that to brag I just say it to say that's where we believe we ought to be. We believe and we're going to talk more today about what's going on in the entertainment industry what's going on in the government industry what's going on in church what's going on all over our world and by that we're going to talk about it and we're going to pray about it. So, call this prayer line number. 712-432-1690. That's 712-432-1690. It will ask you when you call that number for your access code. Your access code is 399-430-POUND. 399-430 pound, and you'll be instructed from there. It will instruct you that there are ever how many people are on the line. It will tell you, and it will also ask you to identify yourself. Now, we have a policy here in this prayer meeting. Because we believe in priest penitent privilege, and because we believe the pastor... Uh, ought to know how to pray and when to pray and to pray. But we make it public. I tell my name, I share my prayer requests, my praise reports, my failures, my successes, and everything. And you're allowed to do the same thing. However, if you would like to remain anonymous, some people would prefer to remain anonymous when they're talking about failures, when they're talking about things in their own personal life, and they would like to remain anonymous, you're welcome to do that. You do not have to identify yourself in order to participate in this prayer meeting. We ask you that. When I say we, I don't. The machine does. And uh, that's a part of the machinery. And it does ask you, please identify yourself, but you can just ignore that, and I'll not say a word to you about it. I may ask you who am I speaking with, and if you choose not to tell me, that's okay as well. But it's right now about four minutes after the hour of five o'clock here in California. That's four minutes past the hour of eight o'clock 
in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., and that's the Congressional Prayer Conference that sponsors this. We're also live on a television, I mean, on a radio uh, broadcast here in California from up in Northern California. Uh, we're on Crusade Radio, CrusaderadioCom, and you can join us there as well. Now we have our first caller on the line, and I'm going to pick the phone up and answer it. Uh, dear caller, are you there? All right, ladies and gentlemen, she's right on time. In fact, she's early, <laughs> but that's okay. I asked her to call in about five after, and uh, we welcome her, and I want to say to all of you, if you would like to call just like she did, all you do is dial that number, 712-432-1690, put in your access code, and then it will say thank you, and it will ask you to identify yourself. Now, this dear lady agreed to identify herself, but if you call us with a prayer request, or if you call and want to ask her a question, or me a question, and you would like to remain anonymous, you just ignore that request to identify yourself. We do not require that. I am identifiable because I am on the television camera right now. Uh, but uh, we're here to share. This is a prayer meeting, and that number and access code is what we call the CCC, the Congressional Communications Channel. Congressional in that this organization, and if you'd like to know more about our organization, our organization can be found at a very long URL but I believe it's necessary to describe it, and that is, if you go on your computer, your laptop, your iPad, whatever, you can go to Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. dot org. Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. dot org, and you will see uh, our purpose, you'll see who the chairman is, the co-chairman, you'll see also a special prayer group on there under the title over on your left column there'll be a title there for first responders prayer team we'll talk more about that later but that first responders prayer team is there as well now one of the things that I do in order to keep this flow if you will is I contact some folk that I have a great deal of respect for because, first of all, they're Christian. Second of all, they're good business people. And they're, in my opinion, the best wire service in the world. And that wire service is, of course, Christian Newswire. I read recently, which I do every day, at least once a day, I went to Christian Newswire and I saw a press release. And I'm going to quote that press release. And then I'm going to have the author of that press release, share with us what her goals were and what she shared with the world all over the world. And that press release said, Christian Film Database releases top 100 Christian films for the year 2014. And folks, 2014 is about over. And young lady, please share with us what your reasoning and what your thoughts were and what they are even today in reference to the top 100. Would you please? Amen. Well, we're certainly thankful for that. In fact, the matter is, in planning and scheduling today, I was uh, working on my calendar. Since we're already almost into January, I was working on my February calendar, 
And in February, uh, the last part of the first week, our friends in Hollywood, you talked about Hollywood, we have some dear, dear Christian friends in Hollywood, Ted Bear and uh, Karen Cobell at Hollywood Prayer Network and so forth. And on the uh, end of the first week in February, February 5, 6, 7, and 8, they do the Movie Guide Gala, which is what we have referred to for years as the Christian version of the Oscars. But last year and the year before, we had to say, along with what you just talked about, we had to say Movie Guide Gala is not like the Oscars. It's bigger than the Oscars. Last year, last two years. And we're hoping it will be again this year. And so we're getting ready for that. Now, Anna Lee, tell us a little bit more about your organization. Uh, now, you, you talk about the top 100 Christian films. What is the organization and where are you located? Well, we certainly thank you for sharing that, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have her give that website one more time, because I know how it is. You're listening or watching, and all of a sudden you say, I want to write that down, and then you can't find your pen, you can't find your paper, and so I want to give you a chance to get your paper, and get your pen, and I want to give you this young lady's name. It's uh, Anna Lee. Am I pronouncing that right? It's A-N-N-E-L-I-E, -E, Anna Lee. And the uh, organization, uh, she's going to tell you the name of it again. It's Christian Film Database. And she's going to tell you the website, though, so you can write it down. So you can not only hear what she's saying and what I say, but you can go, of course, and verify it and back it up at that website. So... Everybody's got their pen. Everybody's got a piece of paper. Give them that website one more time. Certainly. It's ChristianFilmDatabase.com. All right. That's simple enough, and we thank you for giving us that. Now, uh, your press release talks about releasing the top, the annual top uh, 100 Christian films, and I agree with you, my dear sister in the Lord. I am so pleased that Hollywood is waking up to Christian films. We do a thing once Even a... Even if they don't always get it right. Yeah, right. Well, we, we do something every month. On the third Saturday of every month, we do what we call a Hollywood prayer tour. We go from here in Buena Park, just up the street from a big Hollywood place called Disneyland, and just up the corner from another Hollywood place, not so very far, and we take a trip over to all the major studios in Hollywood, Culver City, and that area. We don't go in the studios, but we go around the studios and do a Hollywood prayer tour and say Jesus is Lord over Sony, Jesus is Lord over Disney, Jesus is Lord over NBC, CBS, etc. Now, we do that on the third Saturday, and if you're ever down in this area, uh, we'd love to have you be our sort of tour guide to talk about uh, your projects and so forth. Now, uh, and folks, if you're ever here, be sure and check with us because some months we get busy and we either do it earlier or later in the month, but typically we do it on the third Saturday. And this is a takeoff of a prayer tour that is done every Sunday morning. It's not just Hollywood, though. It's in our nation's capital. The National Prayer Embassy does a tour of, of uh, the capital. All It takes two hours to do it. And it's sort of like an old movie, you know, an old TV show, you know, a two-hour tour. <laughs> well, that's what we do every Sunday morning. And if you'd like to ever join that tour, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in our nation's capital, if you're in Washington, D.C., 
All you have to do is call up Pastor Jeff Wright, and he will pick you up in a 15-passenger van and let you go on the prayer tour. Now, it's done at 7.30 in the morning, uh, D.C. time, and the reason it's so early is because D.C.'s traffic has gotten almost like L.A. and Denver. <laughs> it's gotten so busy we have to do it early. And that's on every Sunday morning at 7.30 uh, D.C. time. And you're welcome to join it if you're there in town. It's absolutely free. You get picked up free and brought back to your hotel. Now, if you can't go to the nation's capital, you can pick up your telephone just like Anna Lee did a few moments ago because this communications channel is set up in the prayer van in Washington, D.C. every Sunday morning at 7.30 in the morning, D.C. time. That's 4.30 here in California, which makes it 5.30 in Woodland Park, Colorado, if I've got my time zone straightened out. Now, with that in mind, uh, Anna Lee, uh, give us a little bit of your background, uh, and what you do with the company other than uh, brag about these top 100 films. <laughs> Well, it certainly sounds like it, and we certainly uh, are encouraged by it. It's always good to find new avenues. As I said, I've worked with Ted Bear and others in Hollywood. I have a granddaughter that right now, in fact, is home on, on uh, Christmas leave from her university. She is an actress, and she is in the New York School of Theater uh, there in New York City, but she's home from, some, from for Christmas and New Year's, but in just a few days she'll be going back to New York. So we're sort of tied in. My daughter, her mother, uh, is indeed an actress and has been in Hollywood in some films and so forth. Uh, not a name that people would probably recognize unless they know her, but uh, they've nonetheless been, quote, as they say, in the business. And uh, right. so we have been uh, very closely watching. In fact, the matter is, when my daughter went in the business, being a pastor, being a Christian, knowing a little bit about Hollywood, the negative side, I said, I don't want my daughter in Hollywood. And I found out that that was not the wisest thing to do. And, and so I began then to investigate Hollywood. And that's when I met Ted Bear and Karen Covell and others and found out that you don't have to go down the tubes with Hollywood if you're there. And that's why I was so glad to see the top 100 Christian films listed. And I also want to say to you, Annalie, as well as any other organization, movies, books, or anything else, we do five days a week of this, what I call, communications prayer line. And you or anyone else is welcome to come on at any time. We're on for one hour twice a day. We're here live on the internet, on crusaderadio.com, as well as on the Congressional Prayer Conference. And we would welcome you not only to come on when you put out a press release, but if any time uh, you feel 
uh, you saw a good movie or you heard about a good movie, and I'm saying this to Anna Lee as well as all of you, uh, and all you've got to do is pick up the phone with this phone number between the hours of 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. California time and say, hey, we've got some more to add to the list, or hey, I saw a very good movie. And I would encourage you to do that and be our correspondents uh, on the ground, our correspondents in the field, not only from professionals like Anna Lee and her husband, but even from amateurs. Uh, I have people call me up all the time and say, hey, Pastor, you're not going to believe it. I saw this movie, yada, yada, yada. And I say, okay, thank you for telling me, but wait till showtime and come on the show and tell me. And, and uh, sometimes they're anxious, and that's okay. I don't refuse calls, but I would like it during the uh, 9 to 10 a.m. and 5 to 6 p.m. The reason for that is twofold. Number one, it shares that blessing of a good movie or what's happening good. That shares that blessing with a worldwide audience as well as it gives me things that we can talk about and make my show what I believe it is, and that is most people say we love your show because it's always so beneficial and so good. So, Anna Lee, thank you. What's your husband's name again? Roger. Roger. Well, we happen to have another Roger in, uh, coincidentally, if there is such a thing, uh, we have another Roger that is there in Colorado. Roger Angus is the international investigative reporter for the Wiley Drake Show. He's the international intelligence briefing officer, and he is somewhere near Colorado Springs. But because of the yes, nature, are. are you are you near there? Yeah. Well, we don't say where Rod, our Roger is, because yes. as an international intelligence briefing officer, he gives us information sometimes that makes people a little upset. So we just say he's somewhere near Colorado Springs, and uh, because we try to protect his uh, uh, safety in that. So. Uh, from time to time, he comes on and does just exactly what you're doing, but gives us an intelligence briefing report and uh, maybe some of the latest things that are going on in the intelligence community. And uh, we would encourage you all. Uh, he also does his own uh, radio show on Crusade Radio. And uh, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe it's on Tuesdays. But at any rate... Uh, He's near, then, you at Woodland Park, Colorado, and uh, I love Colorado. My wife uh, lived in Colorado. She was born in Texas, but lived for a short time, a few years, in Colorado, and then, of course, came to California. But I love Colorado. I love to go there. We used to go there at least once a year, uh, and I love that little... Uh, uh, gold mining town is up in the mountains there. I'll think of the name of it. I mean, Central City. Do you know where that is? No, I'm not sure. Central City is a very historical place. Not too far up in the mountains there from Denver. Uh, you being in the business may remember, and you, but you may not be old enough to remember it, <laughs> but there was an old, old song many years ago written by a heartbroken lover, and it was called The Face on the Barroom Floor. Very famous. Sounds familiar. Yeah, it's very famous over the years. And the story behind it is, is that there in Central City, in that little miner's town up in the mountains, was a saloon. And this heartbroken gentleman went into the saloon one night went back in the back there on the floor, laid down on the floor, weeping for his lover, and began to draw, and he painted a picture of his beautiful girlfriend that had left him and broken his heart. And he painted that picture for several nights, and on about the third night, as he finished the painting of the beautiful face on the barroom floor, he died of a broken heart. And there's been songs written about that. I don't know if anybody's ever made a movie of it or not. But that 
saloon is still there in Central City, Colorado. And I would encourage you to go look at a little piece of history. It's still there. It's still a saloon. The painting is still on the barroom floor. They have a little rail around it to protect it. But it is still there, or at least it was about two years ago, and I think it still is. But a little history there from Colorado. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, how you folks operate. Are you nonprofit? Are you in pro business for profit? Or how do you operate? Well, we're still figuring that one out. Okay. That'd be absolutely great. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the top 100, and uh, Annalie is going to share that with us. And I would again uh, remind you, go to their website and check them out. It's christianfilmdatabase.com, and uh, check them out. And uh, if you, uh, and I'm going to, she didn't ask me to say this, folks, and we don't do advertising as such either. However, I would suggest that you prayerfully consider checking these folks out and if you would like to invest in their ministry they have a ministry that's very needed especially in our day to day if you'd like to invest I'm sure they'd be more than happy to receive a love offering from you now with that in mind tell us about that movie would you Well, we certainly do appreciate that, and of course, one of the, or several of the emphasis that we have here is not only to cover things like these films, but uh, uh, I have on here with me quite often a gentleman uh, that is not the same religion that I am. I'm a Baptist, he's a Roman Catholic, but his name is Father Frank Pravone, and he has a ministry called Priests for Life, and our dear, dear friend who is a Baptist, but on staff with him, is Dr. Alveda King, uh, the, the daughter, uh, of, or the niece, rather, excuse me, uh, the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And uh, she, uh, she is great in that pro-life area, and uh, I can't wait to tell her about this movie called Meant to Be. And uh, uh, if they want to find them, how do they find the movie now? Amen. So you would just click on a abortion and all the abortion films would come up. 
Amen. Well, we work very closely in that area. For example, I've worked for many, many years with Troy Newman, Operation Rescue. Also, I've worked very closely with a dear, dear attorney friend of mine in, in uh, San Antonio, Texas, by the name of Alan Parker. And they have a ministry called Operation Outcry, which deals with this whole subject of women who have had an abortion and many of them come to the point that they say, yes, I know God forgave me, but I can't forgive myself. And as a, as a pastor, I have been involved in that kind of counseling many, many times over the years. And, and in fact, uh, we work very closely with a lot of the uh, abortion emphasis, if you would, uh, agencies and ministries. And uh, I guarantee you, they're going to hear about meant to be. I'm going to watch it, and I'm going to promote it. Uh, even before I watch it, I'll start promoting it because uh, I trust you, and, and you sound like someone who really loves the Lord, and, and I think it would be very good. But we're going to get meant to be. And ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you something here. Let me give you an incentive to get the movie meant to be. If you get the movie meant to be, and you would like to come on my show, all you've got to do is call that number that I'll give you and I, that Emily called in on. And you can call in and say, I saw the movie and I want to give you a report. And you can give that report live right here on the Wiley Drake Prayer Time, right here live on the Wiley Drake Show. And it never ceases to amaze me the number of testimonies that come. We'll have testimonies in later times of someone who watched the meant to be movie and maybe saved a child from abortion and so forth. So meant to be, ladies and gentlemen, and I believe with that theme in mind a little bit that what we're doing here today wasn't just my looking for something to do. I believe it was meant to be for us to come together today and to share. Annalee, anything else that you'd like to share at this time? Well, we certainly do appreciate that, and, and uh, we do, as I said, we do two shows a day, Monday through Friday, uh, one at uh, 10 a.m. and uh, 6 p.m. your time, Monday through Friday, and uh, we do it every week, even when I'm on location. We do them on location from Washington, D.C. I go to D.C. once a month, and we do them on location back there, and uh, we just thank the Lord, and we will appreciate. I have people... Uh, for example, uh, another issue, it's not the abortion issue, even though they deal with it some. Another issue, of course, is the border issue. And we have a young lady that works on that issue, leading people to Jesus and sharing Jesus with them in that area. And she comes on quite often as a correspondent for this show. And so, Anna Lee, we'll officially right now point you our uh, Christian Film Database correspondent for the Congressional Prayer Conference, uh, the Wiley Drake Show, and would love to have you come on any time. Just call that number, and uh, sometimes it may say there's five or six on the line. Uh, you may have to wait your turn. <laughs> but other than that, you're welcome to call any day. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless you, and uh, tell your Husband Roger, thank you for allowing you to be with us for a while today, and we appreciate it. And uh, you're welcome to stay on the line if you'd like. I'm going to move on to some other subjects, but uh, you're also well. You're also welcome to go anytime you'd like. That's the beauty of this open line uh, scenario. You can stay on, and if something else happens, uh, you can go and take care of it, uh, etc. So. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart is fine. Now, uh, 
we're going to talk for a little bit about something that's coming up. One of our governors here in our nation, in the state of Louisiana, uh, Bobby Jindal is doing some work in a thing called Response Louisiana. And the response they talk about, they believe that America is in a state of crisis. Not just politically, financially, or morally, but because we are a nation that has not honored God in our successes or humbly called on Him in our struggles. I believe what Anna Lee and them are doing, and Roger are doing, they're being a part of this response to put out and to talk to folk about this film called Meant to Be. And I believe that is meant to be, and I believe uh, this response is meant to be. The Response Louisiana, which is a project that's going on, the Response Louisiana is committed to prayer above politics, to seeing the church move to stand for righteousness and to pray for God's mercy for America according to the Bible. The answer to a nation in such crisis is to gather in humility and repentance and ask God to intervene. Ladies and gentlemen, we have clichéically said it many times. Second Chronicles 7.14, if my people. But we need to reiterate that again and again and again. And I believe uh, Governor Bobby Jindal and others, uh, and if I pronounce his name wrong, please forgive me, Bobby. Uh, I think it's, I don't know if it's Jindal or Jindal. But uh, somebody correct me if you know. I don't know him personally, so I don't know. And if I do mispronounce it, I, I ask you to please forgive me. But we believe, the governor says, that America is in a state of crisis. Not just politically, financially, or morally, but because we are a nation that has not honored God. The response will be, in my opinion, another historical gathering of people from across the nation to pray and fast for America. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to join me. I am already planning my trip. I have already signed up to go to the response in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, or as the local folks call it, Baton Rouge. And so I'm going, and I hope you'll go. There's two days. There's two days. On the 23rd, there's going to be a project called American Project. American Revival Project. That's not the title of it. I'll get in here for you. I don't know why I'm having so much. The American Renewal Project. The American Renewal Project is going to be on the 23rd of January and the Response Louisiana is on the 24th and there's a great lineup of speakers that will be there and I would encourage you to go to Baton Rouge and be there with us. Find out more about the response by simply Googling it. Put in Response Louisiana. Response Louisiana. Or the American Renewal Project. The American Renewal Project. The American Renewal. R-E-N-E-W-A-L. I don't know why I have so much trouble remembering this. I'm writing it down here on this paper so I can see it. <laughs> the American Renewal Project, January the 23rd, and Response Louisiana, the very next day on the 24th. 
Why is the response happening? Why should I go? And why should you go? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we blew the shofar because the Bible told us to. According to the Bible, the answer to a nation in such crisis, ladies and gentlemen, you do not have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that we are in crisis in America. We're in moral crisis. We're in economic crisis. We're in health crisis. We're in crisis all across the board. But according to the Bible, not widely, but according to the Bible, to a nation in such crisis, the answer is to gather in humility and repentance and ask God to intervene. What does Second Chronicles say? If my people who are called by my name will what? Humble themselves and repent and ask God, He will forgive them, and He will intervene. The response, Louisiana, will be a great moment in history. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm an old man. I'm 71 years old, but I want to make history. I want to be there for that historical event. And Lord willing, I'll be there. The response, Louisiana, will be a historic gathering of people from across the nation to pray and fast. Can I stop and preach a little bit? That'll preach. You see, every time Jesus talked about prayer, he didn't just talk about prayer. Every time that I read in the Bible where Jesus dealt with prayer, it also had the word fast. He said, when you pray and fast, Jesus put the two together. And I'm of the opinion, you may argue with me, but I'm of the opinion, if you don't fast when you pray, you're only doing half a job. Now folks, I believe I can support that with scripture. I don't have time to preach the rest of that sermon because I only got 15 minutes. But I believe the response to Louisiana will be a historical gathering of people from across the nation to pray and fast for America. Governor Bobby Jindal has called Louisiana and the rest of the 50 states to a day of prayer at Pete Maravich Assembly Center, North Stadium Drive in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. People from all ages, 71 years old like me, all denominations, Baptistical like me. I'm a Southern Baptist pastor and I'm a rabbi to the Messianic Fellowship of our church. So people of all ages, all denominations, ethnic, I'm a Heinz 57 variety. I don't know what I am. I know I'm not a man of color, except when I get out in the sun too long. But uh, people from all ages, all denominations, all ethnic groups, and racial backgrounds will gather and I like the way they put this down. They will gather to fast and pray. Sometimes we pray and fast and we leave the latter off. Let us fast and pray. You know when I fast, I can pray better. When I fast from food and certain things, I make a better prayer warrior. We will gather together to fast and pray for America. Will you ask your question? Will you join us? 
Brother Bobby was a little bit more polite. He said, won't you join us? I'm saying, folks, will you join us? What will be your response to the response in Louisiana? A historic breakthrough. On January the 24th, thousands will gather in Baton Rouge, Louisiana to pray for a historic breakthrough for our country and a renewed sense of of moral purpose. We want the presence and the power and the person of Yeshua HaMashiach to fill our nation and turn the hearts of millions to righteousness. Do any of you think we need peace with the police? Do any of you think we need peace in the streets? Do any of you think we need peace in the world? Well, we want the presence and the power and the person of Yeshua HaMashiach to fill our nation and turn the hearts of millions to righteousness, to peace, and to joy in Him. Every time I see that little word, J-O-Y, I write it real big. Big J, big O, big Y. J-O-Y. You know why? Because the secret is Jesus first, others second, and yourself third. J-O-Y. Joy and peace in Him. We want the blessing and the favor of a holy God who loves righteousness, and wants to see righteousness exalt the nation. The Bible says the nation that loves God is exalted. We want to see real change, ladies and gentlemen, across our nation that only God can perform. Will you join us in Louisiana? Will you fast, will you pray and believe with us for a mighty move of God in the United States of America again? There is hope for America. A lot of people today are saying there's no hope. A lot of people today say, say they're pessimistic. Well, I'm a realist, and I know there's some bad things going on. But ladies and gentlemen, there is hope for the United States of America. It lies not from sea to shining sea, but from heaven's portals. It lies not from church to church, but from heaven. And we will find it at the church sometimes, but most of all, we will find it on our knees. We will come together in a historic response. As a nation, we must come together to call upon Jesus to guide through unprecedented struggles and thank Him for the blessings of freedom that we so richly enjoy. And I want to stop there just for a minute and say, would you please pray for our pastor and our brother in the Lord, Saeed Abedini. Saeed Abedini is in a hell hole called a prison in Iran. His dear wife, Nadme, and children are here in this country waiting for his release. And Jesus will guide us through our unprecedented struggles. Just this Christmas, Saeed Abedini wrote one of the most beautiful letters. If anybody had a reason not to write, if anybody had a reason not to be optimistic, he certainly did. But because of Jesus, we can thank him for the blessings of the freedom that we have 
and so richly enjoy. A historic crisis facing our nation and threatening our future demands a historic response of repentance, prayer, and fasting. Now to preach three things God needs from me to bring this nation back. He needs me to repent for my sin. He needs me to pray and he needs me to fast. And I need to ask God to have mercy upon me. The call of God to his people in times of great trouble is to gather together and call on him with one voice, one heart and a unified desire to see great blessing and great joy come to our nation once again. The power of the unified prayer from a humble gathering of the saints is found in the hope that His might answers us and turn the tide of trouble that threatens, that stand against us. A historic response, ladies and gentlemen, of repentance, prayer, and fasting. Please join us ahead of time and during the 23rd and the 24th. Please be a part of this historic response in Louisiana. Why a gathering of prayer and fasting? In Joel chapter 2, an ancient Hebrew prophet speaks to a nation in crisis and gives God's solution. Gather together, repent of their sins, and pray to God to intervene on their behalf. In that day, the command was for everyone to stop what they were doing and gather for a sacred assembly to turn to God with all their hearts with fasting and weeping and with mourning. And if you would like to hear God tell you that in His own words, go to Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Why did God desire fasting, weeping, and mourning? Or to put it differently, contrition, Humility from the people? Joel 2.15 is what we have called over the years a sacred assembly. It was a gathering for people to acknowledge not only that they but their nation had drifted away from its foundation in morality and faith. And if you don't believe that, all you got to do is read the newspaper. Because of this moral decline, the people were not prepared to face the eternal threat rising up against them. God wanted His people, that's you and me, folks, to understand that their internal threats, and Lord, do we have them, moral decline, were greater than their external threats. The economy, the crisis, the military invasion, ISIL, everybody's concerned about ISIL, and so am I, 
But ladies and gentlemen, we need to be more concerned about the moral decline within. If we get the moral decline from within dealt with, the moral decline in others from without will go away. God ordained in that hour of history that prayer that's what this program's all about, folks. Communicating with God. And if you'd like to communicate with us, call this number, 712-432-1690. Put in your access code, 399-430, and communicate with God, but also communicate with us. God ordained that hour in history, and I believe God is ordaining this hour as well. That prayer would serve as the only way of escape from the mounting trouble. Why? Because only God has the power to solve both the internal moral decline and the external economic and military threat. All three are and were unsolvable by human means and human solution. But God had a solution. God had a solution. And that solution was to fast and pray and seek His faith. And I would encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, to pray after you fast. Please fast with us. Fast and pray and seek His faith. Please do that with us. Join us by going to Louisiana with us. And if you can't go to Louisiana with us, uh, join us. Uh, in another way, folks. But we encourage you to join us. We're going to be going there on the 23rd and the 24th. Please fast and pray with us. And please be a part of praying and fasting with us. Would you please? We only have a couple of minutes before we go off. You'd like to call us and pray with us or pray for us, please do so. 712-432-1690. Access code 399-430-POUND. Call us and pray. Now, let me give you my cell phone number before we go off. Give you my cell phone number so you can call me even when I'm not on the air. Even when we're off the prayer meeting. Call me on my cell phone. 714-865-8132. That's my 24-hour day, seven-day a week, cell phone number, and you can call me. And I would encourage you to do that. I would encourage you to call me and let me know how we can pray with you and pray for you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being a part of the Wiley Drake Show today. This has been a prayer meeting on the Congressional Communications Channel and on Crusade Radio. May God bless you and may God help you and may God give you a great, great day as you serve Him. Please join us for this great, great meeting that's going to be held there in Baton Rouge. Two meetings. On the 23rd, the American Renewal Project. I'll be there. And then, Response Louisiana. I'm not a Cajun. I'm not from Louisiana. But I was born so close, I could smell the gators. I was born in a little town called Magnolia, Arkansas. It's only about 30 miles from the nearest Louisiana bayou, near Texarkana. So my heart 
is still in Louisiana to some degree. We thank the Lord and encourage you to join us. Please join us. Please come on board with us. Go to Baton Rouge with us. Would you please? To God be the glory. Great things he has done.